Hello, you wonderful people. We are going to continue building out our Next.js application. We're starting simple first by building a landing page similar to this one. We started in our previous video building out this top navigation. And today we're going to take a look how to get this data for our top navigation from our API. So we're going to learn about the basics of fetching data in Next.js 15. But more importantly, as we continue through this tutorial from building out this landing page, we're then going to discuss how to build out this block section where you're going to have filtering available here to you. You're also going to have search and pagination. Finally, we'll talk about how to implement sign-in both for email and password or how to use a social provider. And as we continue down in the series, we're actually going to take a look how to build this project on which you are enjoying these lessons, which is an LMS where people will be able to log in and will be able to find their courses. They'll be able to navigate to their courses and watch their lessons. People, and this we are is exactly where you're going to see the notes to this video. Currently, I'm still recording this. So the third video is not available, but you'll be able to click on the video similar to this one and you will be able to see all the notes and code snippets that you need to complete this lesson. So without any ado, let's jump right into it. And like I mentioned before, in this video, we're not going to build an API from scratch to manage our data. I ended up saving time and using Strapi. And for this tutorial, I'm just gonna give you all the endpoints like you need. For instance, here's a deployed project. All we need to do is send a request and we're going to get our data for our top navigation for our Next.js application to consume. But if you do wanna build your own uh, Strapi endpoint for your Next.js project or any other project that you wanna use, you could check out the Strapi crash course. Basically, this is where I'm building the API that we're consuming in this course. You could check out view course. And this second lesson literally covers how to represent your top navigation in your headless CMS to be able to get it in your API. So basically our headless CMS has the information for our top navigation and we're going to make a get request to get the data in our Next.js application. With that being said, in our Next.js application, let's go to source and we're going to go to our app folder, which is all our routes, and we're going to navigate to our layout. And you notice that our top navigation is the component inside a layout, and eventually we're gonna have a footer. What's awesome about Next.js, you don't have to fetch your data, let's say in the root of your project here, and then pass your data as props. You could actually call your API inside the top navigation component, and this is the beauty of React Server Component. So let's go ahead and navigate to our top navigation component, and here in Components, Custom, and we go to our top navigation component. And if you were here in the previous lesson, we set up this basic loader where right now we are hard coding our API data that we're able to get access whenever we render our top navigation component. And for now, we, we literally just hard coded the response here to kind of show you that we are able to call our loader function and you could name it whatever you want. And because we're using server React components, we are able to actually call this function within our component and get that data, which is pretty awesome. So if we take a look at our console log, we have our dummy data showing up in our console. What this means is that our loader function being called inside our top navigation React server component and we're able to get this data. So instead of getting this data from our dummy text, what we're going to do, we're actually going to get it from an API. And we're going to start with the most simplest implementation first, and then we'll refactor this. So for now, we're going to start with a try catch block, and we're gonna say if error, we're just gonna console log the error. And here, we're just going to say const response, and we're literally going to use Next.js uh, fetch. And we're going to point to our URL that we're going to pass in here with the appropriate items that we want to get, and then we're going to get that data and we're going to return the data. Maybe we'll clean it up in just a second. And so now let's construct our URL. So here I'm just going to set up basic const and eventually we'll move them to our environmental variables, but for now we'll do it here. So I'm gonna say const base URL and that's going to equal to my deployed endpoint and I'll share this in the notes so you have access to it. The way Strapi works when you make a call, you also have a designated path to that particular endpoint. So we're going to say const path, and it's going to equal API slash 
global settings. This is where our strappy endpoint that stores this data that we're going to use lives. And now we're going to say const new URL equals path and base URL. And this should work and let us get our data with one caveat, which we will mention in just a second. But for now, let's just console log our data and see what we're getting. And I do have a typo here. It's not global settings, it's global setting, which it's fine for our use case at the moment. So now making sure that your application is running and we could see that we have the output. And currently we're just getting the settings and in Strapi, similar to GraphQL, you do need to ask and tell what items from the API you wanna populate. And you can learn more about it from the Strapi video that I created. So if you're curious how I build this API, go to codingafter30.com, go to the Strapi 5 class, and this is covered in the second lesson. And you could read more through this here, how we construct our data, how we sort it in our headless CMS. And what I'm referencing here, this is actually the response we currently got. And notice how we're missing all of our data for our top navigation. And because similar to GraphQL, our REST API expects us to specify what items we want to return from our endpoint via filtering. So what we want to do is we want to add filters that will query and populate our top navigation. And we'll learn more about this as we continue, but for our next JS tutorial, this is not that important because all we care about is our data. And just to make this work for us, there's two things we need to do. Number one, we want to install this package called QS, which will allow us to use object notation to get a query string. So let's go ahead and do that first. So I'm going to stop my server and I'm just going to clear my screen. And I'm going to say yarn add QS. After we add QS, I'm going to clear again. So it's at the top and we could say yarn add at types QS to get all the necessary types. Once this is done, I'm going to restart my project and back in VS code on the top of the page here, I'm going to import QS from QS. And now what we're able to do, we are able to add our query inside our URL. So we're going to say URL.search and inside here, we're going to add our query and I'm going to paste this in, but I'll provide this in the note. We're basically telling our endpoint, make sure you populate all the items for the top navigation. So now when we take a look at our response, let's click reload to reload our data. And now when we look at our response, we could see that we have our data and we have our top navigation. So what we're going to do, we're just going to return the top navigation content. I'm going to adjust this. You're going to return that data dot top na navigation. And we're just going to say const navigation equals dot data. And we'll add error checking in the next video when something goes wrong. But for now, if data is either undefined or null, or there's no top navigation to kind of make sure our app from crashing and just return undefined, we are just going to add these checks here. And we're just going to return our navigation. And so now we should be able to see just our top nav items here. So let's take a look. And now when we look at our response, we could see that we have our logo title. We have our nav items and we have our CTA. So now let's use this data in our navigation. We'll do a basic check, which we could make much better, but for now, we're going to say if there's no data, let's return, uh, H1, which, which will say no data found, but in later videos, we'll talk about how to handle this more gracefully and how to, uh, handle errors. Now that we know we have data, and we could destructure our items. Looking at our response, we have the logo title and we have CTA. So I'm going to go ahead and pull those out. So we're going to say logo title, nav items and CTA, and now we're able to use them. So let's go to our logo title. We have logo title dot label, which is going to be the name logo title dot label. Since this is a link, our logo title has a href, which is responsible for the redirect. Now we're going to go to our nav items. It's complaining because it says we want to have some sort of types 
And for now, we just stick the types in here. We know that we have an ID, label, href, external, and type. And so here, I'm just going to create an interface on top of the page here. So I'm gonna say interface, and we're gonna say nav item. And we have ID, label, href is external. We also have type, but type is not a string. It's an enum. And for enum, we have link, primary, or secondary. Secondary, I can't spell, but I'll trust it. And so now that we have our nav item, we could go ahead here and we could say nav item equals read only nav item. And then our nav item function will stop complaining. And here we're using the href. Is it external? Is it nav item ID and label? So this should show up accordingly. And let's go ahead and make that same change here in our mobile nav. Perfect. And this should work as well. And so now taking a look at our application, if we do command R, our home, about, blog, and coding after 30 is now coming from our API. And I'll show you this. I'm going to log in into my Strapi backend. And again, please check out that video on Strapi that I shared earlier in this video if you wanna see how to build this application. But for now, I'm gonna log in and show you that here we have inside our content manager, we have global setting page. And this is responsible for our title. So I'm going to say awesome web and let's add another item here. I'm going to say test and this is going to go to test and it's just going to be regular link. And now I'm going to go ahead and save and publish my changes. And now when I go back to my Next.js application and do command R, notice we have awesome web, our name updates, and we have test, our new link item. And what's awesome is that we don't have to hard code this in Next.js, but you could use a headless CMS to represent the data. And I know I already said it before, if you're interested on finding out how to build this backend, you don't need to. I will share the endpoints with you for learning purposes, but you could find the course at Coding After 30, go to courses and check out the Strapi 5 crash course. Now that we know that we're getting our data, let's populate our CTA, our call to action. So let's navigate to our CTA button and we're going to say CTA label for href. We're going to get our CTA href and I believe that's all we need to do here. And finally, let's update the CTA here, CTA href and CTA label, perfect. So let's clean this up. We could remove the nav items that we were hard coding earlier. And here at the bottom of our page, we're going to remove this unnecessary hard coded data that we had. Perfect. We now know how to get data in our Next.js application. We created an async function called loader. And inside here, we just used fetch to fetch our data from our endpoint, which happened to be our Strapi API. We return our data. And then we pull the navigation, which is the only items that we need, which is awesome because this happens on the server. So we're not sending any unnecessary data to our front end, which is kind of cool. And then we are able to get access to it by directly calling our loader function inside our component. We're doing a very rudimentary check to see if there's data. If so, we go ahead and destructure it. I'm gonna go ahead and remove these unnecessary console logs but we now know how to load data in next and we'll refactor this as we continue along. And then we uh, looked at a very cool example of how you could structure your URL by using new URL. If you want to learn more about it, search up MDN web docs URL constructor and it's gonna show you all the different things that you can do, which is kind of awesome. But in our example, we used it to construct our URL passing our base URL, which is our strappy endpoint, including the path to our particular endpoint that's returning our data. And then we were able to pass our URL search params to say, hey, please populate all the items for our top navigation. And putting that all together, we are able to get our nav items and our website title. Nice. And in the next video, we're going to take a look what happens if we get an error how can we handle that error gracefully in our Next.js application? See you in the next video.